Why is it important to involve adolescents in health decision making? Well, research shows that adolescents living in households where they engage in decision making together with their parents have more positive outcomes than those where either the child or the parent is fully in charge of that decision. So today we're gonna to be talking a lot about autonomy, which is the process of becoming self-governed. As we're thinking about um, these this exciting time of making new decisions and about parents doing that and um, adolescents doing that and doing this together. Um, there's likely a lot of different emotions that might arise and so Fiona has told us surprise um, and through my research other people have told me things like about excitement um, there's also anxiety and this occurs on both sides from the youth point of view and from the parents point of view. So thinking about um, all of this range of emotions and all of these things that can occur when youth are starting to make their own decisions about their health, what we really want to do is make this process of developing autonomy a really good experience for both youth and parents. So we have evidence that adolescents who are encouraged to develop autonomy um, by their parents or they're act actively encouraging that, they actually make healthier choices later in life. My interest in this um, in this uh, area of autonomy really started with some research that we did with adolescents where they were examining their motivations to participate in research. So we conducted focus groups with teens and we wanted to know um, why they were getting involved in research and what their real motivations for doing that were. So what they did was they came to a focus group to talk to me about this and we were talking about two things, both their involvement in the actual focus group that we were doing that day and also their involvement in a larger study that was um, a much more long-term and much more involved research where they would actually have to be giving biological samples and things that might be a little more anxiety producing than just talking to me. So we wanted to know why they would get involved in these different types of things. So we found that there was, were a range of factors, both internal and external, and what was most interesting to me was when adolescents were talking about their parental encouragement to actually become involved in this research. And I started to really think about this in context of some of my other research and the HPV vaccination that we were doing. And I wanted to know how adolescents and parents were really navigating this decision together. So throughout most of the talk today, we're going to be using this example of HPV vaccination to really examine this co-decision making process. So just before I tell you about that, I'm going to pause and tell you what HPV and HPV vaccination are, just in case uh, you're not sure. So HPV stands for human papillomavirus, and human papillomavirus is a sexually transmitted infection that can be prevented by vaccination. So the, um, sometimes that's called cervical cancer vaccine as well, and it's offered for free to adolescents in Australia in year seven or eight, depending on the state, and it's offered to both male and female adolescents now. So a few years ago, when the program was just being started with female adolescents, we did some research to understand what the adolescents really understood and knew and kind of why they were or were not getting the vaccine. So we did find that um, both adolescents and parents had really low understanding of what the vaccine was, um, and that was both about HPV and also about the actual vaccine. And there were a lot of misunderstandings, a lot of misconceptions, and a lot of um, a response to when they realized that they didn't have a lot of information was that they really wanted more, and they wanted to be able to feel informed about this vaccine that they were receiving. Um, we also found that there are a lot of different types of decisions being made about HPV vaccine. So sometimes parents and adolescents were really active in this decision making process and they wanted to um, go out and get the vaccine and they wanted to learn more about it and we call this these really active vaccinators. Um, in the school-based program, we have something really interesting that is very different than um, exists in other places where there isn't school-based vaccination. And we have this um, passive vaccination and non-vaccination occurring as well. So that might happen when, um, a passive vaccine might happen when a parent just signs a form because they're really used to signing every form that comes home and it just goes back to the school and the kid gets vaccinated but no one really knows what happened. Um, there's passive non-vaccination as well and that's when maybe the adolescent loses the form either on the way to or from the school. Um, 
And then we have people that actively um, did not want to get vaccinated. And um, a lot of times we found this was actually due to some misunderstandings and again related back to that lack of knowledge. But throughout all of these types of decisions, we found that adolescents really wanted to be involved, but that they weren't really involved in the decision. So most of the time the parents were making that decision on their own. And what we also found was that there was a very high level of fear and anxiety among the adolescents. And some of it was just kind of baseline fear about the needle actually pricking the skin and um, not wanting to actually get a needle in the arm. But there's also um, these kind of other things that were happening um, both in the school with the other peers being nervous and um, spreading rumors around the school. And there's also a lot to do with the actual lack of information and that adolescents couldn't kind of um, respond to the rumors and myths they heard because they didn't have any information themselves. So when we talked to adolescents, one of the things that they really told us was that if they understood what they were getting and why, and if they actually um, had more information and had more involvement in that decision, that they wouldn't be as fearful and they would actually want to get the vaccine because it was something that was actually good for their health and was protective for them. So because of this, we wanted to find ways to help foster that um, decision-making process for adolescents um, with their parents. So we started developing several materials, and one of the things that we were looking to do was um, change just a few areas uh, or constructs or domains. So these are here. So we wanted to increase adolescent knowledge. We wanted to increase their self-efficacy, which is kind of their confidence in going in and feeling like they can get the vaccine. We wanted to increase that decision involvement so that they were actually feeling like they were involved and um, that their um, say was just as equal as their parents. And we wanted to decrease their fear and anxiety, um, which is highly related to increasing these other things. So we talked with a lot of adolescents, we did a lot of focus groups, we did a lot of development work, and we came up with a few things that we were going to actually implement with them. So we had a film which would have things where the adolescents were um, watching the short parts of the film in school and then doing activities with their teacher to reinforce the information. We had a magazine that had the same types of material and information in it, but just as a take home form so they could look at it with their parent. Um, there's a website, so again, they could look at that on their own or with their parent at home just as reinforcing of the information. It also has the film clips and things they watch in the school. There's apps, and those are designed for use um, in the vaccination process, so while they're waiting and during as forms of distraction and um, reminders of what they're getting and why it's important. And then a decision aid, and that's um, kind of what I'm going to focus some of the rest of my talk on, is the development of this decision aid, which is something that we wanted parents and adolescents to use together to really foster that decision. So. As we were um, developing these materials, what I really wanted was for adolescents to develop these materials and for them to really take ownership and really feel empowered and love the materials and have them really um, have this adolescent feel to them. Um, but we had a little problem with that and um, I think it was a really good lesson for me in this whole kind of area of learning about um, how adolescents get involved and make decisions because the adolescents didn't have a lot of information about this topic and they didn't have a lot of understanding about it. So when I asked them to kind of help me make these materials, um, they didn't really know what to do and they couldn't do it because they hadn't kind of gone through this development process and they hadn't kind of um, been encouraged and uh, brought through one step at a time. So what we did instead was um, we took draft materials to them over and over and over. Um, and the materials and the um, kind of icons and the little um, figures and the whole look and feel of all of the materials were driven by the adolescents. So we changed those several times and we would go back to them and get feedback about um, what things looked like, about what words we were using, about um, the feel that they got from things, about the emotions they felt when they were kind of um, seeing and listening to these messages. And um, I think that's a really good parallel for what we want to do with adolescents' decision making um, throughout the time they're growing up, is we want to be able to kind of take them step by step along the way and um, not just kind of let them jump into making decisions um, just one day without kind of preparing them. 
So the research that we did in um, designing this decision aid was really pretty unique. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to know more about how parents and adolescents really navigated this decision about HPV vaccine specifically. And so we did um, interviews with parents and adolescents together. So this is a picture of a Skype call that we were doing with a mom and her daughter. And that's my research assistant, Robin, who is doing the actual interview in the corner. And um, so we did some of these in person and some of them by video Skype, which was really close to doing it in person and really cool. Um, and so we would talk to the parent and adolescent together first and we would ask them these questions and um, have them tell us the story of actually how they made this decision and have them kind of tell the story together so we could also see um, how each of them was contributing to the whole storytelling process as well. Um, and then after each of them talked to us together, then we would talk to just the parent and then finally to the adolescent alone at the end so that the adolescent also felt safe that we weren't going to go back and tell their parents anything that they had said. Um, and so this was um, really interesting but also really unique research because it's showing us um, this whole kind of family environment and that really influences how adolescents actually develop their autonomy. And so this actually helped us really understand this specific decision-making process a lot better. And parents and adolescents were expressing some of those same kind of emotions that I was talking about at the beginning. This um, excitement, um, but also this anxiety about kind of talking about things and making decisions together, because a lot of times um, that hasn't occurred very much in the past. So as we were developing this decision aid, we did the same type of thing we did with the other materials, and we were taking it back and forth, um, this time to parents and adolescents together instead of just groups of adolescents. And um, this is just an example of one of the kind of charts that we used in the decision aid, and this is a draft one, which isn't even the final one. But um, for example, we showed them information in several different ways, and um, this one, the colors are different now, and um, we have little people and stuff instead of little dots, and these were all things that we changed as a result of talking to people, and um, we would have adolescents kind of tell us back what they were seeing in these pictures so that we understand that they're understanding the information as well as the parent. Um, and this whole process of going through developing something that parents and adolescents can use together um, was really fun, but also really cool because the parents and adolescents um, were using the material together as we were piloting it and we were seeing um, how this interaction and the difference um, from the research where they had been telling us how they had done that before without any kind of facilitation material. And so our decision aid has kind of little points where it says, now stop, talk about this, and has little cues and kind of directions for how the parent and adolescent can actually really um, get through that decision together. So, um, overall, um, we have developed some materials, so for example with HPV vaccination, but I think there's a lot of areas in health decision making that we can develop more kind of co-materials that actually focus on parents and adolescents and give them that opportunity to work together to make a decision. And fostering autonomy in adolescents has been shown not only to kind of increase healthy choices both at that time and later in life, but also to have added benefits of improved social interactions and increased school performance. So what I hope you take away from this talk today is why developing this autonomy is so important and maybe some ideas about how to incorporate that um, into your life if you're a parent or planning to become a parent. <laughs>